every quirk and every weird thing and every, I guess like, idiosyncrasy that I had growing up that I tried to suppress because it was too weird, it was too, you know, it didn't fit in the mainstream. That's stuff that I'm being sought out for. So even like being a talkative person, now I'm getting like paid to give keynote speeches about like the weird things I have to say or just, you know, being bisexual growing up and really not understanding if that was okay or not. And now I'm like meeting with and on the board of the Tegan and Sarah Foundation, the two people who helped me come out when I was 15. I'm really blessed to be in a space right now where the work I do both personally and professionally is all about bringing forth education and bringing forth a world that really honors everyone's truth. So whether that's through Equality for Her, where we pay people to create lesson plans about different unique subjects and topics and then turn those lesson plans into free educational resources for everyday people. So that way you don't have to go back to college to learn about social justice and everybody from my 12 year old cousin to my 50 something year old mother can learn about things like gender diversity and what transphobia is and how to avoid participating in it. Being a very visible queer Muslim woman and realizing how much that means to people. If you do something positive in the world, whether you have you know like 50,000 followers or zero, you're still affecting people around you in a positive way. It's really transformed my understanding of what a role model is and how you can inspire others just by being yourself. Honoring and paying homage to what happened on Christopher Street at the Stonewall Inn, we have to think of that revolutionary past and that means that we're not just out marching, we're not just out celebrating, because that's important, but we also have to be looking at legislation against you know, conversion therapy. We have to be fighting against people being put into spaces in schools where they can't even use the restroom that they identify with. So we have to really be attentive to the injustices that folks in our LGBTQ community are going through while we're celebrating. It's crucial that we continue celebrating our triumphs, but we can't lose sight of the struggles that we still have. So use those moments where you're in spaces that are affirming, that are exciting, that are celebratory, and fuel yourself up and get ready to return to the battlegrounds in your hometowns, in your cities, in your schools, in your offices, and fight those injustices every day. So fuel yourself up during Pride and then go out into the world and fight back.